welcome to Baby's Birthday. Each show joins a mum-to-be and counts down to the birth of their baby, revealing all the drama, laughter and tears involved in giving birth. Because let's be honest, giving birth is never a walk in the park. To help chart each birth, this is the Baby's Birthday Clock. It's there to count down to each mum's due date. And once labour kicks off, the clock kicks in and times the birth so you know exactly how long each mum's been in labour, whether it's two hours or a whopping 20 hours. All the action of the birth is boiled down into a half hour show. So, we'd better crack on. We're off. Today we meet older mum Alison and her family as she goes into labour. But the birth doesn't oh, go smoothly dear. and it's not for the faint hearted. <laughs> Alison, do you know what's happening? I really thought one of them were going to die. It's something sticking in me. It's not me. It's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we got where we are today. Alison and Jeff Smith found love second time around and have been together 10 years. Alison has two sons from her first marriage, 21-year-old Mark and 19-year-old Darren, and a nine-year-old daughter called Leanne with Jeff. At 45, Alison's no spring chicken, which means giving birth comes with loads more risks and dangers. A lot of people are worried about me because of my age and everything, and they, they just want it over, and me and the baby both to be OK. Obviously, my husband is going to be there and probably my sister because I need somebody to make me laugh and keep me calm and hopefully that's what she's going to do because we just laugh anyway at anything so that's why she's coming. Oh here we go Luke, one okay. of both of you. You did well. He's got to show up Sam. We got to take a photo of him now and again <laughs> just in case he got lost. <laughs> I, Truthfully, didn't expect to have another baby. I thought, at my age, that I would be menopausal. And then, when my period was late, I was a bit shocked and I thought, this is menopause now. And then just one day I decided, well, I'll just try a pregnancy test and see. When she brought the pregnancy test round to mine, and told me to have a look at it, and I nearly dropped off my kitchen floor because it was the last thing I expected. And I think I did one every week, really, and they all kept coming back positive. And it was a bit of a shock. But I thought, I'm not going to get past 10 weeks. I was convinced that I wouldn't get past 10 weeks. Now that I've got to 39 weeks, I'm absolutely amazed, really, that I've gone this far. And when it is born, it will be a shock, I think, because... You know that it's going to come and things, but it's just unbelievable when it actually happens. And it's, it's like other people just finding out that they're pregnant. You just find out that you've got this baby, and it's a miracle, really. Has he got tennis balls in his pocket? <laughs> <laughs> he always had tennis balls in his pocket when he had his photo too. Why? I don't know why. <laughs> Coming from such a big family, there were seven children in my family and I just can't imagine a life without children. When I had Leanne and I didn't think that I was going to have any more children, I felt really sorry for her that she hadn't got a sister because I've got so many sisters and I just couldn't imagine a life without a sister and I did feel sorry for her on that. To me, I feel as though I'm doing something for her, giving her a sister, because I, I just can't imagine anybody living without a sister, really. Alison and her sister, Lisa, are all geared up for the birth, but we've not heard much from hubby Jeff. Yes, I ought to be at the birth, but um, I do work for a security firm, and depending on my shift times and when I'm working, um, it might be a bit difficult to get there right on time, but hopefully I will be there for the birth. My husband's a bit too quiet, you see, he's not... I don't know how to describe him, really. His body will be there, but he doesn't actually put things into words. He's not... He's, he's very quiet and reserved, a bit like me. Oh, you're doing a good job, there. You've got this mane as well. I'm not looking forward at the birth of Alison probably swearing at the midwife. 
um, which happened last time, um, and probably having a, a real go at me as well. I'll have to go and put the kettle on. I've done that. Oh, have you? That's very good of you. I don't really want to. If I could stay calm, I know that it would be easier. So that's what I'm going to try and do this time, just try and stay calm and think, you've done it before, you can do it again and it will soon be over with. That's what I'm hoping to do. During Alison's pregnancy, <laughs> Jeff's proven himself to be quite the modern man. Even though I help around the house, I think I've just done a little bit more in every job I do, which is do the housework, make the bed, do anything I can, you know what I mean? I've just improved or done a little bit more to what I normally do. Do you really want a brew? Well, just make it. If I don't drink it, we can always throw it away. The pregnancy in the early stages went very well. There was no major problems. But as we've got near the time, obviously Ellison's had a few problems. Um, morning sickness and things like that. Um, we did have a false alarm. One night we had to go to the hospital. She was checked and everything, and everything was all right, but she was having the normal pains, the contractions. And we obviously thought this that was a time, but it wasn't. Um, and she still seemed to have a good days and bad days, I suppose, as every woman does. Hey, shut up. Are you enjoying that lovely cup of coffee I've made for you? Well, the last one we made with milk, this is made with water. It doesn't quite have the same texture. Can't afford all that milk. <laughs> <laughs> as Alison is in her mid 40s, there is a much higher risk of there being complications and problems during her labour and Alison has prepared herself for the possibility that her baby has Down syndrome. At 20 weeks, I went for a scan and they did a test where they measured the back of the baby's neck, which the baby's neck was thicker than it should be and that's when they told me there was a chance of Down syndrome. I'd like a healthy baby, but if it's not healthy, then it's still my baby. So long as it's alive and breathing, that's all that matters. If Alison was in her 20s, the chances of her baby being Downs would be one in 2,000. At 45, the odds are now massively higher. There is a one in 30 chance Alison's daughter will be Down syndrome. Two days later, Alison is just over an hour into labour with Jeff and Lisa by her side. This is a partogram. It's what we, we do all a year. A A partogram. That. And it's all your observations and things in labour. And how well you're progressing. At least that's working. And I think it was round about quarter past eight when I got there. And I still weren't convinced. I thought they were going to send me home, but they didn't. And the examined me and said I was five centimetres dilated. So I thought, well, I must be in labour then. <laughs> hey, if it stays like this, I can cope. <sighs> Just keep saying it's mind over matter. I'll pretend it's a pea and I've got past it or a gallstone. Well, there was nothing really happening. She was having contractions and the gas in her was there and she wanted a drink of water and I was having a water. And Lisa was there supporting everything. And it was going really well. Some bear man you are. No, it's the ice I want, though. No, come on. Play for her, that's better. I hope your hands are clean. Right, that'll do. Don't wet bed. You prayed for this, didn't you? <laughs> you, Jeff Ed, you prayed for this. Oh, she's on one that I'd go into labour tonight so you yeah. wouldn't have to perform. <laughs> <laughs> that was a plan. <laughs> No, she's always like this. So. <laughs> then they showed me the gas and air, which that were special about because I was saving it. She asked me, did I want to go? And I said, no, I'll save it for later. So I still carried on and I think it was about quarter, I don't know if it was quarter past nine or quarter past ten when I started on that. We're off. Come on, child, make an appearance. What time did we come in? Eight o'clock, you sure? No, quarter past nine. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one. 
one. It should be about mm-hmm. quarter past one. I'm not going no longer than quarter past Nine. one. I'm not breaking with tradition. Jesus, me left it. Oh. Move down. Not up. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh. If you squeeze me hand any tighter, it'll bloody fall off. You just hold, and I'll do the squeezing, because I'm getting things in the middle. You don't squeeze it, you just hold it behind. Because I'm, I'm all right at the minute. <laughs> Due to Alison's age, there is a higher possibility of complications. Are you timing these contractions? As Alison's contractions get stronger, problems start to develop. Then as the pains got stronger, Alison had more gas in her. And the real next thing I understood, everything was fine. The midwife who'd been out came back in and said that there was a problem. Yeah, they've gone from 10 breaths of this to 25. Now they're getting stronger. Now what does that say? Does that say the same or does it say different? Well, she looks like you're having regular pairs, but so I'm not actually just talking to her, she's turning on the phone. Can you just stop filming, please? After just over three hours of labour, things are not looking good at all. Jeff and Lisa are having to face the nightmarish reality they could lose either Alison or the baby. Alison, do you know what's happening? Coming up. Alison's labour continues. Do I want the baby to be alive or Alison to be alive? We're back with 45 year old Alison, who is three hours and four minutes into labour. With her are husband Jeff and sister Lisa, and Alison's birth has run into serious complications. She looks like you're having regular pants, but I'm not actually just touching session. Alright, turn the other one. Can you just stop filming, please? This midwife was examining me, and all I heard was, Your baby's pooed inside here, we've got to get it out, turn the cameras off, and that's all I heard. And as I looked at the monitor, I noticed that the baby's heartbeat had gone down to 78. So I just went into panic mode then. And well, from there, it just went mad, really. The fact that Alison's baby defecated inside her is an indication it's in distress and usually means it's being deprived of oxygen. The baby's heartbeat has now dropped dramatically. The baby urgently needs to be born or else she could die. Right, can we get that oxygen on her, please? Get this oxygen on her. It's all right. Come on, Alison. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Alison, do you know what's happening? Everything just happened all at once and everybody was in that room and baby's out be Alison said it she saw it at 74 or something like that. I saw it go right down to below 30 and it was absolutely horrendous. Because I thought, one of them's gonna go. I really thought one of them was gonna die. I can remember a lot of shouting and somebody taking that gas and air off me, which were murdered at because I was in real pain then. I can't describe the fear and the, the feeling that I had. And I come out of him and thought, I can't cry in front of Jeff, I can't cry in front of Jeff because I've got to be strong for him now because he's panicking and worried. In fact, I've never seen Jeff. He's in motion on his face and the colour just drained out of him and Jeff is just Jeff. When things started to go wrong, obviously, you don't know what to do, really. You're there, you, you, your mind's going all over. Um, and when they said theatre, she was going to the theatre. Um, I didn't know what to think. I just thought, 
who's going to be alive at the end of it all, really. That's, that was my main concern, because it was going so well at the time, and then it just, so everything changed so rapid. Anyway, you good sleep? I've, uh, I'll do my bum down just to tell him what you want, but, you know, we'll do our best. I'm just going to get baby out. I'll... And the one big concern for me was if anybody came to me and asked if there was any complications, what would I have to do? What, you know, would I go say, you know, I want the baby to be alive or Alison be alive? Because I just don't think I could have handled that. I don't. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It's just important we get baby out now, Alison, or on the slide. Yeah. Three. The hospital have reacted quickly and rushed Alison to theatre. Jeff is with her, but all Sister Lisa can do is wait for news, whether good or bad. Alison was in so much pain because she wasn't dilating at all. So they whipped her down to the theatre for a section. And she kept saying, I want to go to sleep, I want to go to sleep. And anyway, I put her to sleep. Well, they said, they come in and told me that they'd um, put her to sleep, and the next minute they said that she was awake. And, Oh, it was just so scary. I mean, you can hear that heartbeat, and it would, and then it just, and I, oh, I've only ever seen her cry four times, if that, and to see her and be so frightened, it were awful. It were really awful because she's so strong. And then the next thing, I was in stirrups with all the lights shining in front of me, ready for. A caesarean and I, all I kept asking were will you put me to sleep will you put me to sleep and they didn't because on the way down to this operating theatre I dilated fully and she was coming on her own. They were telling her to push as much as she could but she'd had that much gas in her by then I don't think she could really understand what they were saying and the next thing I heard that the, the surgeon had said that the baby had dropped the next contraction, they told me I had to push, which normally you wouldn't do. You'd wait until you had a proper pushing pain. And then they connected this thing to her head to actually suck her out. So it was like two pushes for her head out. And then the third push, they sucked her out really and she'd come out fuller. But it was horrible and I thought I was going to die or the baby would die. I literally prayed, I was really praying that they save both of them, they can save both of them. And I looked at the baby and there was no sound at all the first few seconds. And I kept looking at her and suddenly there was a noise and she started to cry and that's where all the emotions went and I just realised that everything was going to be okay. So I turned around to Alison and she was in absolute agony at this time. Well, I think we finally got her through it and I'm just so pleased that we did. Is baby okay? Baby's okay. Hi, big. Six, four, seven. Is that all? Josie, can you bring Leanne? No, you show me. Right away. Is Alison okay? okay. Oh, well, I'm Is Alison okay? Alison's all right. She's been stitched, that's all. She's right. giving a fighting. Right. But it's done, everything. And baby's okay. Yeah. You're coming in a minute. Just... Wait, it's coming in. Yeah, yeah, it's coming. I'll let me have a way first for that. But the baby's fine, is she? Yeah. My legs shaking a bit and my hands are similar, that same, but apart from that, I'm alive and that's <laughs> all that matters. Is there any chance that I get to all I will if I have to. <laughs> are you? Ooh. Are you alright, mother? Are you going home with your dad? We're just so glad now that everything did turn out perfect. <laughs> After nine months of waiting for Nikki Lou's dramatic arrival, Alison and Jeff's waiting is not over yet. Tomorrow, they will find out if their daughter has Down syndrome. You're wide awake now, aren't you? Yeah. The, the idea is you stay awake now till 10 o'clock tonight. Don't eat the towel. That's a good girl. And then at 10 o'clock you can go to sleep. <laughs> Although it's your dad's night for having you, so you better not stay awake all night. <laughs> and be sick all over him. Just like you every other night. Don't make no exceptions just because it's your dad. Are you listening?
After the baby was born, the midwife that had been there from the beginning, she was talking to me and she said um, about a home birth that if it, if it had have been a home birth, it would have been a completely different outcome, which I could see that then. Um, she never actually said the word downs to me, but she knew that there was a chance and she come to me after and she said, I can't say for sure, but the paediatrician will come in the morning and examine her. But from what I can see, she looks all right to me. And that was the only thing that was mentioned at the night. And then at the morning, the doctor, he come really early and he examined her. Um, I didn't care by then. She were alive and that's all that mattered. So I, I weren't bothered what he said. As long as she were breathing, that's all that mattered. And he examined her and then he just said, she's perfectly fine. When Nicky Louise um, arrived, you're just on top of the world, really. Um, it's my second daughter, obviously. I've been through it once before, but with the complications we had, it was just so wonderful that she'd actually arrived and delivered, and both of them was absolutely fine. <laughs> this baby, to me, was meant to be, because Alison had, had suffered like miscarriages. She lost so many babies. And for her to actually carry this baby full term and a bit fine, healthy, this baby was meant to be. So, fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Alison's labour lasted three hours, 58 minutes and 32 seconds. After all the drama and heartache, Nikki Lou is here and the perfect addition to the family.